Anakin. You look the same. You look old. The previous chapter had me worried about the direction it moved the plot, with the world between worlds potentially creating plot issues. How did this turn out? Is the show still on track or will this chapter derail it? And what was the deal with Anakin showing up? Hi there, it's Micha. If you'd like to find out, then join me for this review video. The chapter, titled Shadow Warrior, starts with Hera and her squadron searching for Ahsoka and Sabine. But they wouldn't find any trace of them. I told them to stay together. But they never listened. Meanwhile, Ahsoka is told by Anakin that he is there to finish her training. What's the lesson, Master? Live. Or die. While they engage in a fight, Jason feels a presence and hears the dueling lightsabers in between the waves, making Hera concentrate their search on the ocean. Ahsoka, feeling cocky, looks like you don't have much left to offer, literally got the ground beneath her taken away and finds herself being a teenage Padawan again, right back in the Clone Wars alongside her former master. His main lesson, even though the Jedi are keepers of the peace, if times demand it, they need to fight. And if you stop fighting, you'll die. While Ahsoka ponders on the fact that there need to be more to teach than just war. They continue their fight. You lack conviction. Until Ahsoka beats him and says, I choose to live. There's hope for you yet. Ahsoka then returns to the ocean, where she is found by Hera's pilots. Using the memory impressions Sabine left on the now destroyed map, Ahsoka learns that she handed it over to Balin and was then taken with them. With the Republic's fleet arriving to force Hera and her team to come back, Teva stalls them to allow Ahsoka to connect with one of the Purgles, hitching a ride through hyperspace while Hera stays behind. May the Force be with you. Okay, this was another one that is tough to rate. On one hand, there was a lot of fan service. And yes, seeing the Clone Wars with young Ahsoka in the middle in live action was a real treat. Nice work, Commander. We'll secure the perimeter. And there was some great visuals along the way. Even the de-aged Anakin looked more convincing as in the previous episode. Well, mostly. On the other hand, I was asking myself, were those scenes really furthering the story and what was it actually that we were witnessing there? And I will try to answer both. Was this the world between worlds or were we all totally off? If it was, it feels like they changed the rules of that place. Sure, the rules in the Star Wars Rebels episode were not clearly defined, more implied, but it appeared as if only real beings could walk the bridges and they are only able to enter moments in time through portals. Here, Ahsoka was falling into the past and even her appearance changed accordingly. It felt more like the inside of a Jedi temple, which would be in line with Anakin appearing and claiming to finish her training. We have seen similar scenes taking place in Jedi temples before where the person entering will meet versions of other characters on their trials. Let's call them echoes, imprints or essence of that person represented. But they are not real. Therefore I believe this was not meant to be the world between worlds, but something new entirely. Some kind of a virtual Jedi temple. That likely means that Ahsoka, now that Anakin's essence has finished her training and she has passed the trial, became a true Jedi which would very much further the story and gives the episode real meaning. However, as this was clearly not the real Anakin, but just a version of him, they should have just brought in Hayden Christensen as is. No need to de-age him, as his spirit could also have matured. Just saying. 
One is never too old to learn, Snips. Still, the premise of her choosing if she wants to live or die seemed a bit weak. She always fought and she always wanted to live. Her being defeated by Balin's skull had nothing to do with her commitment. At least not that we would be otherwise aware of it. In any case, that whole episode was visually interesting and a nice tribute to the animated shows. It was cool to see the young Ahsoka, who was thankfully not depicted in that skimpy bikini she wore in the first few seasons of Clone Wars. And I very much enjoyed the fact to see Hayden Christensen in that setting, finally showing us his interpretation of Anakin in that time period, which was pretty strong. Yeah, no kidding. Especially after we all felt so bad for him in the prequel episodes 2 and 3, where he was still quite unexperienced as an actor and given some really bad lines of dialogue, no one could have pulled off convincingly. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating and it gets everywhere. Now he finally got the chance to redeem himself and his character after he was not really allowed to do so in the recent but quite unsatisfying Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I mean, could you imagine returning to a role you want to redeem, preparing intensively, just to then only have a quick flashback scene with bad de-aging technology and otherwise being relegated to walking around with a helmet while James Earl Jones provided the voice? Tell her to stand down. Hayden likely felt like someone tried to pull a fast one on him there, so it was especially nice to give him more to do here. There were some smaller story issues here like Jason, whom Hera should not have brought along on such a potentially dangerous mission, obviously only being there as a plot device to feel Ahsoka's presence, further highlighting his connection to the Force, which here didn't even come with a payoff for him. Will you train me? No. Do you know how to build a lightsaber? Yes. Will you teach me? No. Another one was Hera sending Teva to stall the Republican fleet, which she could have done herself as only Ahsoka hitched a ride with the Purgles. So there was no need for her to also stick around. It was also unclear why the Republic, after not willing to spare the resources to send out Hera on this mission, now all of a sudden has a fleet to send after her. Really didn't make sense. Nothing big, but still gave me a bit of pause. Two other random observations. What's up with Chopper? He is usually one of the fastest droids you'll ever see and here he was just very slow and moved, well, rather choppy. Which is in stark contrast to the depiction in the animated show. And what is going on with Teva's uniform? Who tailored that and how is that supposed to be practical? Well, and with that being said, let's get to the rating. But before we go there, let me ask you to like and share this video if you enjoyed it so far. And if you are no subscriber yet, maybe consider to change that. By also hitting the notification bell, you will get a heads up for most of my new videos. Now for the rating. This was a pretty good episode, which included a large helping of fan service regarding the Clone Wars flashbacks. And it gave us some strong visuals throughout. There are still some question marks about what Ahsoka's trial really meant and I shared my views about that but I also think it is nice that everyone can project a different meaning into those scenes. Some small plot points felt a bit forced and constructed but overall I'm quite happy with this episode, especially after fearing that the world between worlds aspects would steer the story into illogical waters, which it didn't and it wasn't even the world between worlds at least in my opinion. For me this one was for sure a good episode and better than expected. As it was almost a great one, I'm going with 7.5 out of 10 points here. So the show mastered the halfway mark on a good note, something one cannot say for all of the recent Disney Plus shows. Well done. What about you? What are your theories about that other realm? Do you think that was even real? Whatever you like to share, let me know in the comments. One last call out. I know this video comes pretty late in the game, as the show is already over by now. I couldn't film this earlier as I came down with Covid, but I will still continue the review series as planned, mainly for consistency and a minor case of OCD. Those next ones will of course not spoil later episodes and I will not put in any theories, as that is redundant now. I hope you will still get something out of them. And as always, so much for now. 
See you next time and thanks for watching. The chapter titled Shadow Warrior starts with Hera and her squadron. Squadron. If time demands it. If times demand it. Especially after we all felt so bad for him in the prequel episodes 2 and 3. 2 and 3.